So to continue our discussion about biology and learning, specifically about the brain, let's just recap what we talked about previously. We said that the brain eventually, or actually starts developing embryonically. It starts developing before birth, and there's a lot of development that occurs here that results in synapses forming. And synapses are those connections between neurons. And those neuron connections have the ability to change. That's what we call neuronal plasticity. You have the ability to change based on the activity that is done. And if the activity that is done increases signaling, this allows the brain to develop stronger connections and stronger memories. And then if it does not increase signaling and actually decreases signaling, you lose those memories. You don't form those memories as well. And that's that idea of use it or lose it. So those are our three main concepts uh, about the brain. There are two more that we want to talk about in terms of biology and learning. These three end up giving us this idea uh, behind what is known as uh, memory. So we'll say number four is memory. We all know what memory is, but let's talk specifically about the biology of it. Um, and then let's refer to a, an example of a phone number. I'm just going to write this down on the side here. Just think of a phone number, and we're going to look at this example in terms of two things. In terms of our short-term memory, which I'm just going to abbreviate as STM. That's what you're commonly seeing it as. Um, you'll see it as STM. And then uh, conversely, we have long-term memory, LTM. And so there's a process in terms of forming memories, let's say of a phone number, that involves both the short-term memory and long-term memory. Short-term memory involves storage of information at the hippocampus. The hippocampus is a part of the brain devoted to storing information for about, let's say, 30 seconds. Close to 30 seconds. Um, it holds about seven plus or minus two pieces of information. Seven is about a phone number. So if we think of a phone number, what can happen is we can either remember it or we can forget it. And so this idea of remembering or forgetting at the short-term memory level is, let's say, the idea of either releasing it. So it's, this memory can either be released after 30 seconds or... If necessary, after 30 seconds, it can actually be sent to, guess where? Long-term memory. So we can write down sent to, right underneath this arrow, long-term memory. So long-term memory is a little bit different, both physiologically, that means where it is in the brain, and in terms of what happens at this area. Long-term memory is located mainly at the cerebral cortex of the brain, as opposed to the hippocampus. And here... What happens is permanent storage. So we store information. This is where our information is stored. And what happens is, let's say you have a phone number, you remember it past those 30 seconds, you send it to long-term memory, what's going to happen is eventually you're going to need to remember that phone number. And every time you remember a phone number, whether it's your own or your house phone or whichever numbers you have memorized, you're going to take that stored information from long-term memory and guess what you're going to do? You're going to send it right back to short-term memory and you're going to speak. And when you speak, you have this ability to say what was stored and tell somebody that phone number that they were asking for. This is kind of what happens on exams. You have this time that you have to study and remember, and you hope that what you are trying to remember is sent to long-term memory so that when the exam comes, you can take that information that you stored and send it back to short-term memory in order to answer the questions. This is learning. This is our steps for learning one two and three and this is actual learning happening right here this is an example of what we see and to finish off this idea of the brain the last and final step of biology and learning is of course learning learning is what allows the brain to develop in the incredible ways that we see it develop and overall we now understand that the embryonic development and the neuronal plasticity and the user loser concept and this idea of memory, all of these things create learning within the brain. And the biology of the brain is set in a way to promote this. The brain has the ability to learn so long as the user promotes the learning, promotes the increasing of signals, promotes the increasing of synaptic connections, promotes this efficient transmission into long-term memory and then back to short-term memory. So these are the ways that we learn in biology. And this ends our idea and concept of brain and its role in biology and learning.